Hello, Skiz here. Want to drop a quick disclaimer. While most of our podcasts are funny and overall lighthearted, today's podcast comes with a small warning. You see, today we're talking about ghost stories. I'll admit that while there are a great many laughs, as always, it does tend to get a bit spooky at times. If this is something that you would prefer to stray away from, well, obviously that's fine and we'll see you next time. If you still wish to stick around, well then... Buckle up, because it's about to get real. (laughs) Excuse me. Enjoy the show. It's like like these ghosts, they set up shop. They like their their house. I'm just going to, if I get, I'm just going to ask a ghost, do you you want me to leave or not? I'd be like, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. No, you can't say that, dude. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right, today's going to be a little different. Yeah. <laughs> than, yeah. Than some of our heavier topics or even our fun ones, because today we're going to actually talk about ghost stories. Yeah. Mm. So I guess I guess, let's just start. Let's just dive into this one. Do you believe in ghosts? Okay. That's a loaded question because this is, this is, a, okay. Um, but. No, I don't know. <laughs> like, here's dude, why, dude. I am so glad you answered that way because that was my answer. <laughs> is I don't actually know uh, yeah. if I believe in in ghosts. Yeah, but I can tell you that there's been some events in my life where I could easily be convinced that there is such thing. Yeah, because they just don't make sense no, otherwise. It doesn't, and that's the thing that the human has to make sense of things, yeah. right? So I feel like any sort of weird story. Uh, I could tell, or that's something I've experienced. I feel like I can always logic my way out of it. Right. right. And I'm like, am I doing that? Because I don't want to admit that this may have been real. I, I don't, but I, what I do think is that from a universe standpoint, it's so vast and that like, just the fact that we use like 5% of our brains, that whole thing, there's so much unknown that I just think it would be foolish to rule out the possibility of, mm. of the supernatural. Yeah. How can you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are, we, are we doing this? I'm gonna get heebie-jeebies. This is, I know. I'm just wondering, like, how many times is Skiz gonna say uh, that your hair is erased? I know. And you got the the goosebumps. I and hate. Stuff, I but, hate the heebie-jeebies. Oh man. All right. I will. Okay. I'll, I'll tell the first story. Are you I, go? I have. I only have a few. All right. Um. So I'll admit that. But but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm definitely intrigued by the whole idea of ghosts. So uh, that's the reason why I wanted to do this topic. So okay, when I was in, I would say like fourth grade, a friend of mine had me spend the night over at his house. Mm -hmm. And when I told my other friends that I was spending the night at this person's house, they're like, oh, you don't want to do that. And I was like, why not? And they're like, you haven't heard? Heard what? This house is haunted. Oh, come on. I'm like, what? And and I'm like, I don't believe in that stuff. It's whatever. And they're like, no, seriously. They're like, dude, you you don't know what you're getting into. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I didn't didn't believe him. And I was like, whatever. I'm going to spend the night at his house. So I'm in his house. And, you know, we're kids and we're like, yeah, we're going to stay up all night long playing video games and stuff, you know? So now it's it's nighttime, <laughs> it's dark, and, and his parents had long since gone to bed. And him and I are playing Nintendo Rad Racer or something. I don't know, like Sight Bike, whatever. We're, we're playing Nintendo on, on the, you know, the TV in his room. He had a TV, a little TV in his room with Nintendo. And we're playing and we hear we start hearing all this like banging noises, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was coming, it was a two-story house. And it was coming from downstairs. Mm. And and I was like, I thought your parents went to bed. And he's like, oh, yeah, they're in bed. And, and we pause the game, right? We pause the game. And he opens his door. And he's like, yeah, their door is closed. Uh, they're definitely in, in bed. And I'm like, do you have like a a brother or a sister or something that just came home from, from work or whatever? He's like, no, I'm an only child. And I was like, well, what's all the banging? And he's like, I don't know. Let's go check it out. And we go downstairs and... And we're looking all around and we're turning on lights and stuff. And we go into his kitchen and turn on the light in the kitchen. And every single cabinet in the kitchen, the doors flung wide Come open. Come on, you on shut up. Every single cabinet in the kitchen, bottoms and tops. That's a poltergeist, Drawers dude. all pulled out. We everything. play fast mode. That's a poltergeist. Yeah, I'm getting chills. <laughs> so, so we're like what like who could have done this and he was with me the whole time so he wasn't him pranking me right uh-huh. we were playing video games we were literally together the entire night there's no chance he could have snuck away and did this himself 
And unless his parents were jerks, uh. and somehow <laughs> did it, which I don't believe they would have, but <laughs> we looked out right away and their door was closed. So I don't think they could have even like, they would have got caught if they did. Anyway, oh my so we're like, uh, that's freaky. And now, now it's like all those conversations I had with other people at school where they're like, his house is haunted. I'm like, oh my God, are they true? Yeah. You know? And I was like, all right, you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm a very logical person. I'm like, okay, it must just been somebody messing with us, you know, yeah. like maybe he had a other friend come in and do it to, to, to screw with me just to keep this whole, my house is haunted story alive or whatever. So then we were like, we close all the cabinets and we, we go back upstairs. And when we get upstairs, the, the TV that we had paused our video game on that was on the pause screen when we left static. No, the entire TV was just that static signal that it gets when when there's like a no channel found type thing, just fuzz and just loud. And that I was like, OK, I don't I can't explain this. I, I can't explain this. How have experience. you never told me this story before? <laughs> Probably because I suppressed it. I didn't want to say yeah, it you got the heebie, you got the heebie jeebies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God. That's luckily that's all that happened that night. But that was like my first experience of. This could actually be a real thing. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm not going to sleep at all tonight because <laughs> you told that really well. I didn't like that. Uh, <laughs> now, now, like, like you were saying, like my brain logics, it's like, it's just what it does. It, it just logics its mm -hmm. way out of things. So my, I think to myself, okay, well, uh, his, the, the people at school were just kind of setting the seed cause they were going to come and do it. And then right. you mentioned that you asked him, do you have a brother or sister? And that's when you learned that he had a, he was an only child, which would be indicative that you was a brand new friendship. So oh, now yeah. it's even more on the realm that they could be messing with you, but you can logic yourself out of anything. If you just make up the facts, you know, that this could be very, very real. And, mm -hmm. and I, so my, I don't even, here's what's weird that my first, if I, if this was an experience, if you will, uh, actually I, I would venture that this was my only, unless I'm suppressing something, which might come to the surface sometime during this pod. I was at a, I went to a cabin with a buddy of mine. It was, it was a, a friend of mine and his parents. So he was very young. It was a friend of mine and his parents. And we went to this cabin, right? And we showed up very, very late. It's one of those things where you're, okay, we play phasmophobia. You know how creepy it is you're going in the cabin at night? Yeah. It was one of those situations where it was a really, like you, a cabin in the middle of the night and you're showing up and it wasn't really, it wasn't theirs. It was like they were getting, borrowing it from a friend or I don't really know, right? We have a cabin. Here's the key. Yeah. Well, we walk in. And it's really this kind of like little spooky, not dirty or anything, beautiful cabin, but just very, very dark, very quiet, very long hallways, the whole thing. And so uh, my buddy's like, I guess, you know, our room's going to be down in this hall. So I'm like, okay. So I go walking down that hall and it's really kind of dark and I can see, but it's dark. And all of a sudden I wasn't even scared when this happened. Okay. I was not scared. I walk and it, and I feel like I, like when you, uh, when you're, when you're walking and there's a step that you didn't know that was coming, that, that, like that feeling that you're falling over type thing. Yeah. I walk and it was like this slope, like it sloped down in this hallway. And it was like a very cold breeze at the same time. I just, whoo, like, I'm like, Oh, what was that? And then I went back and I was like, this hallway sloped. I wasn't afraid at all. I had no idea what just happened. And my buddy's like, what are you doing? And I'm dragging my foot across the ground, trying to find the slope. And he's like, what is this? I said, this just sloped down on me. So he starts doing it. He's like, it's a perfectly flat hallway, dude. And I'm like going back and forth. I'm like, what just happened? It was like a year or two later, I was watching a special on the paranormal. And they were talking about when you walk through a spirit, you mm -hmm. feel like you just stepped down and you feel a cold breeze. I'm like, no, <laughs> you know what I mean, dude? Like, am I keeping keeping? <laughs> like, I was like, like it was, I was nothing about that experience frightened me. I was just like, that was a really weird sensation. It was years later watching this paranormal. And I remember being like, no way, because they explained verbatim, like, like exactly what I had felt that night. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I was like, okay, I mean, then here comes the logic piece, right? Because we only do use a, teeny tiny bit of our brain and has the ability to fill in a lot of gaps. And it, and it, and I think that I could have just had a weird sensation or a teeny tiny bit of lightheadedness. There's a possibility that I never actually felt the coldness, but because two years later I saw the special, my brain filled it in that I did feel the coldness. You know what I mean? Like there's so many yeah. different uh, avenues here that could make it, that, that could logic your way out of it. But when you go right to the fundamentals of the experience and what I learned two years later and the fact that when I had the experience, I wasn't looking for this stuff. Holy moly. Yeah. I think I walked through a spirit, dude.
It probably did. It didn't even ask my permission. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they do. Yeah. I don't think they ever do. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I'm so having having interactions with so my first story i never like had an interaction right i was i don't feel like i was in the same room i didn't feel any anything it was just something happened i observed it and then it moved on i do have another time in my life and this is much more recent where i felt a presence like literally felt a presence and and kind of kind of saw it right like you don't hear a lot of stories of like, oh, it was, I perfectly saw this ghost as we see in movies or whatever. Right. Like, like it, it, it's more like a, a something's off type thing. So the last house I lived in, I from the moment I moved in, something felt off about it Ugh. and I couldn't put my finger on it. Like like there was just a this is the house over the one before this house. Yes, the one before this house. So, yeah, you've been in. I like that house. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice house, but. Uh, it always had like, especially upstairs. So you never, you didn't go upstairs very much, but upstairs, um, like in the the master bedroom area and the kids' air, ba- bedrooms and bathroom were upstairs. Um, there always kind of felt like this heaviness to it, like this almost like a darkness, you mm-hmm. know, to where you would go upstairs and immediately just kind of feel weighted down mm-hmm. a little bit. And I didn't think much of it, you know, because that's such just a insignificant like feeling that you don't really acknowledge it until my pet was reacting to it to like my pet would literally you know pets do weird things so even this is even this is like not nothing to note but they know stuff but my my cat remember my cat Bo? yeah um love that cat and uh it would get upstairs whenever it would go upstairs from time to time you would just you would just find this cat just staring up into this one corner at nothing. There was nothing there. And it would just sit there and stare into this corner for like hours and not moving, just staring as and just frozen. Uh. And it was always odd. It was just, it was very odd. And so I started asking, like I started to get to know the neighbors and I was like, I was like, what's, what's, what's the story with this house? Like what, what, who was in it before, we lived in it because I kind of at this point in time, I'm kind of like wondering, did, did somebody die in this house that I need to know about? Like, because I'm starting to feel that it's off, you know, and they and I found I come to find out that before we moved in, the house was actually vacant for over a year and like transients had come in. So you know, like homeless people had come in and just occupied the space um, somehow mm. and just and so they they were like there's a good chance that somebody had come in and, and died. Well, a transient had come in and, and died in this house, but they didn't know. They didn't know for sure. Oh, come uh, on. But just, you know, maybe neighborhood stories. I don't know. But so anyway, I was like, okay, good to know. There's a chance like somebody recently died in this house and, and could have been a transient that like, you know, so it didn't make the news or anything. So time had gone by and I was sleeping. I was sleeping one night and well, my wife and I were both sleeping in the in the bed and and whatever kind of like I, I kind of felt like uh like this the blanket move. You know, I had like a, a blanket on top or sheets or whatever. I kind of felt it like move and it woke me up. And and I look over to my wife and she's she's still sleeping. And I was like, all right, it wasn't her because she's sleeping. But something yanked it at my my sheets or whatever, because it had been pulled down a little bit and it woke me up. And then. I, I kind of like, you know, you, when you wake up, you, you kind of like clearing your, your eyes a little bit. And I, I kind of look above the bed and floating directly above the bed no. was like no. a, like a shadow. No. Like, a, like the room's dark, but not completely dark. Like there are, we had like, you know, night lights and stuff like in the bathroom. So there is some ambient light in the room. So it wasn't pitch black. So, but it was pitch black directly above the bed in somewhat of a like human figure shape uh, not, not with like perfect limbs or anything but like the shape of like a head and body and it was just floating it was just literally floating there and i remember just being petrified yeah like it, it literally just like rendered me like just still it, i was like i'm not moving and i'm pretty sure i didn't go back to sleep that night like i just like stayed there and it it had hovered for a while, and oh then I eventually gosh. just like I'm just gonna close my eyes and, and forget this is happening, and then eventually I opened them and it was gone. I was like, I ever since then I was like, 
I don't know if I want to stay in this house yeah. anymore. Like I literally, and to the point that when we, so we sold the house about five years, six years ago. And um, some people moved in and I, I desperately wanted to get in contact with the new people and find out if they had experienced anything in this mm. house. But guess what? They moved out. Oh, there it is. They moved out within a year of being there. Okay, we got to find and them. And I never got a chance to talk to them. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, they moved in, experienced some stuff, okay. and said, I'm getting the heck out of here. I went to your house a lot. You didn't <laughs> tell me this. I don't like ghost stories. I was hoping that you would take it home with you. I'm, no, dude, I don't want floaty buddy coming home with me. What about here? Any ghost stories here? Uh, Just say no, because yes. I'm here a lot. Come yes. on! Um, so about three or four podcasts ago, uh, there is evidence in our actual video footage of an orb floating directly in, right here. Are you being a jerk right now and li telling a lie? I'm not the one that left a comment. Come on. Who left a comment? Somebody left it. You said you read them all. <laughs> I know. I, I missed that one. I definitely somebody missed that one. Said, somebody said, look at this timestamp. There's an orb. And I looked at it, and they were right. There was there was a floaty bit. However, this could be debunked as just like dust particle floating around. Okay, you ready for this, dude? Okay, because I didn't even th I didn't even think about this until you said it, and I I have not looked into this, and I'm sure it's nothing. So somebody tweets out the other day, "Skiz, something's behind you in your stream," and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" So this has to be when I stream. Yeah. And it's a freeze frame. And and I'm like, I haven't looked into it because I'm like, I just want to just absolutely assume that somebody just Photoshopped this because I don't want to go back and look at my stream to find out. It is very clearly some sort of fiery figure like reaching for my throat from behind me. It's a freeze frame in one of my streams. What? Like in my in my office at home. Dude, this gotta be Photoshop. It has to be, right? Here's the deal. Obviously. I'm giving it a little bit of merit because I don't want to, I don't want to go. I'm just going to assume it's Photoshop. I don't want to go back through my raw footage and be like, what is that? You know what I mean? So instead I was like, I'm going to just, just dunk my head in the sand and I'm going to, I'm going to pretend I didn't see this tweet. And this is the first time I've talked about it. It's somebody will find it. Yeah. Well, I, but they don't have my raw footage. It got, it's got to be, well, I mean, guys, whatever. It's a stream. It was a stream it's be captured on in a VOD. It's got to be right, and so I could go back and find what it. What day? I I don't remember. Come on, you just I don't really, want to. No, you can't handle I, the truth. I can't handle it, dude. <laughs> That's why I'm ignoring it. That's because I can't handle the truth. I saw the image. It's got to be a Photoshop, right? It's one of those things. I've done it zero was, it was research. Too clear. Well, it wasn't. No, it was actually still obscure, but it was clearly something behind me, um, wow. coming at me from behind. Now I've had no paranormal activity in my house. So I was like, this is just a Photoshop or whatever, mm -hmm. but I was, it's got me all sorts of spooked. So, okay. I would say the clearest testament as to why I entertain that the paranormal um, has a very real potential to, to be real is because I will not with a thousand foot pole ever touch a Ouija board. I won't do it. True. And here's, yeah, here's, here's the crazy part, right? You know what it is? It's a, it's a board with nothing but I won't touch it. I won't do it. And I've never done it in my life. I have no actual stories of my own. And, and I wouldn't touch it even before. Okay. I'll tell you this. Here's why I won't touch it. So the singer of my band, when I was younger, right? Love this dude. Uh, his, his uh, background, not his background, his, like his great grandmothers and his great aunts and stuff like that. They were all black witches, right? They 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 practice the occult, right? Dark magic and stuff, huh. right? And and this sounds ridiculous what I'm saying. I don't know anything about it. I'm not like an occult master. He very much believed, and he was just like, I will never ever touch a Ouija board. And this was a dude that was really down for anything at any time, but a Ouija board not going to happen with him, mm. right? So we are we went to go camping. Me, him, two others. Actually, it was the whole band, the whole band, the whole band. It was all four of us. We, we were going to go camping. We knew that we were, the band was about to break up because a couple people were moving. Let's go have one last camp together and go our separate, we're, you know, we cut our last album or whatever it is. And then we'll go our separate ways, whatever it was a long time ago. And we we go up camping. Now, uh, my singer's name, uh, my singer's name is Jared, right? And, and I love this dude and he's driving his truck and I'm in the passenger seat. And then our two bandmates behind us were in a separate car, not, not sitting behind us. They were in another car behind us. And we decide, hey, it's like, hey, going camping and setting up at night. I don't know why this happened. I, I would rather be there like at the crack of dawn. 
but we're, it's very late. It's like 1130, 12 at night or whatever, when we're trying to find our camping spot and we don't go to a campsite, we go in the middle of nowhere. So we had, it was one of those situations to where we had already been driving like through barely recognizable roads for like a good 30 minutes. Like it was like, we were that much wow. in the in nowhere. Right. And when the reason I like to camp like that is because I just, I don't, I like to camp by myself. I like yeah. to be where there's nobody yeah, you around. Yeah, I want to hear other people around. Yeah, point. I, I want to be able to laugh with my friends and know I'm not disturbing other people and stuff right. like that. So anyways, we get up there and uh, I'm like, this, this right here, this is a campsite. I've been here before. It's great. So he's like, oh, I love this campsite. Like we, not site, it's just a clearing. Right. He pulls in and as he pulls in, he sweeps his truck around and the headlights capture, catch something for just a split moment. I go, what was that? And he's like, what was that? I said, back up a little bit like do, do go back like bring your light your headlights to the right a little bit so he goes puts it in reverse and he cranks the wheel to the left and pulls the lights a little bit over and there on the ground all i can see is something that doesn't belong there and it's it's a it's a blanket and it's perfectly cleanly folded and there's something in front of it i don't know what i'm looking at and i'm like what is this and he becomes super still and i and like he knew what it was i didn't i had no idea and he's just staring at it and he goes, don't get out of the truck. And he gets out of the truck. And obviously I got out of the truck for two reasons. I'm very curious. And whatever this is, he's not going to go into it alone. He's about four paces in front of me as he's walking up to it. And I'm behind him. I can't see what it is because he's in front of me. And we're just like walking up. And I see him. He gets about five feet away from it. And he's looking down and he turns back. He just spins around. Not a drop of blood in his face. And he goes, okay, that's it. Get in the truck. We're out. And I'm like, what is he? He's like, no questions. Get in the truck. And I'm like trying to look and he's pulling me away and he goes, get in the truck. So we get in the truck and he says to our buddies, he's like, we're turning around. And they reach out the window. What's going on? And he's like, we're, we're, we're turning around. And so he starts going down. He's going down this mountain so fast. I'm like, Jared, you're going to roll the truck. Like chill out. Like we're really, really cool. I'm like, what was it? And he won't, he won't say words. And I'm like, what is going on right now? And so finally we get to the base of the mountain. He starts to feel a little bit better. And uh, he's like, I said, what was in front of it? So that there was a blanket. It was perfectly folded. There was not a single leaf on it. This was a, this is what drew my attention. It wasn't like a crumpled up blanket. It was perfect square in the middle of nowhere. In front of it was a ring of rocks. There was a candle. There was blood. There was a doll. Somebody was doing voodoo, oh right? So I was like, what, what? Are you kidding me? And I'm like, dude, voodoo's not real. He's like, it's not something you really, you want to go back and look at it. I'm like, no. <laughs> And, he, and I, and I'm all, you understand that whoever it was, was looking at us the whole time. He's like, yes, I do understand that. Like they saw the trucks coming. They probably went and hid behind a tree and just watched us the whole time. Oh my right. Gosh. So we're at the bottom and he's freaking out. So he calls his mom and, um, you know, his mom was never part of the, the, the dark magic stuff ever, but her mom and her mom's sisters were. And, uh, he tells his mom the story and she's like, okay, it's, you're fine. You're fine. I'm going to, I'm going to say a protective prayer for you or, you know, whatever it was. So we're sitting there and all of a sudden this like wash of calmness just comes over and he's like, I'm good now. We can go back. I'm like, well, I'm not going back. He's like, well, we're not going to camp there, but let's just go beyond it. So we decided let's just pass it. So we go back up that whole mountain and our buddies are behind us. And now they know the story and they're like, we sure want to choose this mountain. Can we just choose a different yeah. mountain? So we're like, we're just going to go way past it. So we do, we get to that site and we're like, he's like, I'm not going to even look over. We didn't, we just, just blew past and we went up probably another three, four five miles, whatever, up the mountain, whatever it was. And now I'm just on edge. I am on edge. I bet. And uh, we get up there. We find another clearing. We're like, okay, this should be good. We feel good about this. So he pulls in, and now I'm just hypersensitive. What are we going to find this time, dude? His headlights pan across something else, and it's two floating, glowing eyeballs. And I'm like, ah, it's an elk. And I was just like, yeah, it was just, it was just an elk, dude. It was, and I was like, oh, my God. And I and he we just start laughing. I'm like, dude, I am on edge right now. And then we set up camp, and it was fine. Oh my gosh, <laughs> my heart's racing just listening I know. to this story. Jeez, what? Uh, I think we're gonna lose some listeners after that one. Right, they're <laughs> like, not gonna. We're like, I can't handle this. Yeah, dude. maybe we got a little disclaimer on this one. <laughs> Scary stories being told. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, I told my two, and so I'm done. That, that's it. That's all I had. But yeah, I mean. I, we're I, I definitely have an interest in it. whether whether or not i truly believe in it is is something i haven't come to grips with but i can tell you i really like well i like playing phasmophobia oh uh, yeah first of all like that game is, is super cool but also my wife and i we like watching like ghost adventures yeah um this dude have you ever seen ghost adventures i think i have but not as much as there's you guys. this dude zach baggins is his name and um <laughs> 
I don't think you would like him very much. <laughs> Why not? I like everybody. I know. He's kind of like, um, he's not a dude, but you would think like most people that get into that profession uh, oh, might, might be, but might be a little different or off, but uh, he's very like into himself. Oh, okay. You know right. what yeah, I mean? I gotcha. like, it, at least he comes across that way. I don't know the dude personally, you know, and so you can't, you, you shouldn't judge somebody by their Too late. I hate present. him. Presence, but <laughs> anyway, it's an interesting show, and we and we watch it, and and but I find myself the entire time watching that show doing that, like, like oh, okay, well they tied a fishing string to that door to make it close when they wanted it to close in the yeah. camera, you know, oh that orb that floated across the room, that's just dust or a, a bug or or whatever, and you find yourself like trying to debunk everything they do because in the end of the day is a show. So there's a very good possibility that stuff is staged. But yeah. at the same time, it is it is kind of fun to think yeah. in a way. Well, from a like, distance, you don't have yeah, to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like from a distance. But it, it, it is kind of fun to think that like maybe that is is real, you know. This is that, that's also scary. Yes, it is. And well, so in the other stories like that I have are, are really um, retells of experiences that very close people to me have had, right? And so... Mm -hmm. Another thing that drives home the not wanting to play with it. I have like three other stories I can tell you, dude. So the not All right, yeah, buckle up, it's yeah. story time with skis. So here we don't want to, so the Ouija board. So my buddy, um, and this is not this is not acquaintance of mine. You you know him very well. And I, it's another dude I've known even longer than you. And he's, um, I, I love him very dearly. He's a very close friend of mine. And he told me this story. And this was not him telling me a story of something that happened to one of his buddies. This was, this happened to him. And he's not taking me for a ride here. So all what I what that means is that what I have going into this is that I'm getting a firsthand uh, telling from somebody who is not embellishing and is not mm -hmm. lying. So that's all I have. It doesn't mean that he's not mistaken about what he saw, but it does mean that I he's I'm getting a firsthand account of it or secondhand because I'm getting it from him. He was there. Okay, so he was younger and he was at a friend's house. A bunch of his good buddies are just having another sleepover like they always do, and one of the kids wanted to play with. They had a Ouija board. And so they played and, and he wasn't, if I recall, he wasn't afraid to, he's like, yeah, let's do this Ouija board, you know, conjure the spirits. Uh. <laughs> and they didn't know what they were doing. And so yeah. they were just young kids and they were playing and they just were just like over it because when they put their hands on it, um, cause you know how it is, you'll put your hands on it on the little dial or whatever. And it just kept, they could, would ask a question and it just would go to the number 12. Right. And they're like, okay, ask another question. And then it went back to the number 12, uh, or one, two, or however the numbers mm -hmm. work. Right. At one, two, yeah, because it doesn't, it just goes one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so one zero to and nine then two or, like or whatever thing. it is, right? Yeah. One and then two. And then I'll do this in one, two. And they got to a point, they're like, why does this thing keep trying to count or whatever, right? One, two, one, two. And they were just like, it's okay. Unless one of you is messing with everybody's like, I'm not messing. I swear I'm not messing. My hands, my fingertips are just on it and whatever. And so like, okay, just, they all just gave up, whatever. They, they went on and played video games and they gave up. They were done. Well, it's getting about time to wrap up. And they all get into their separate, you know, sleeping bags or whatever. And my buddy's on the, on the ground and, and on his sleeping bag. And he's just about to fall. He's not, not afraid. He's not up. He's not wired. He just hasn't fallen asleep yet. And he sees himself and he's looking at the clock. It's a digital clock. And it says 1159. And he's just like, ah, oh, it's about to be midnight. Like there's nothing, nothing, no reason for me to be afraid. It's about to be midnight. That's all I could think. It's like, it's almost tomorrow. You know, like you're a little kid. Like yeah. I've almost slept through the whole night. You know, yeah. it's almost tomorrow. And then boom, it turns 12 in the instant that it turned from 1159 to 12, they heard a huge smash and they're like, everybody's like, what the heck was that? And so they just pop up and they turn on the lights and they're like, what was that noise? And there's, and they look and there was a picture on one side of the, uh, that was hanging on the wall of one side of the room that was smashed against the opposite wall. Oh it gosh. flew across the room exactly at, look at my goosebumps. Oh, yeah. It yeah. flew across I the room. <laughs> All the way smash into the other side to the point to where it like he was startled. He wasn't scared. He was startled. Like, oh, somebody knocked something over or whatever. And they were like, this picture, like, did it fall? And the the kid who lives there is like, that picture was over on that side. Like that picture was not hanging on this wall. It was hanging on that wall. Like oh 10, my gosh. 14 feet away, whatever it was. So I'm like, what? So now, now the dude I'm talking about, my buddy, he is also extremely logical. Mm -hmm. And all he was even at a young age, he's like, I will logic my way out of this. And there was just nothing. No, he could not. There was nothing. Wow. He couldn't figure it out. There was not a string off it. So a buddy did this. It wasn't like his buddy did it, threw it away, and then climbed back in bed. 
like it was the, the room was pitch like pitch black super quiet and then boom right at 12 exactly what the ouija board was doing <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> i don't like it wait how could you tell that story and then sit here and say i don't know like that just... uh, exactly right but well <laughs> here's why because i wasn't there now, granted, yeah. this is a game of telephone, but right. it's a very, very, it's only one hop. It's my yeah. buddy. And it's not somebody who's an acquaintance. This is a, also like one of my brothers. I love him. I've been friends with him forever, you yeah. know? And, and, and here's, ready? I'm going to jump into another one. <laughs> so, uh, actually, uh, a mutual friend of ours, actually, is another drummer friend of ours. I was at his house and we were just drumming, right? This, I think we had a show coming up. It was a long time ago. And uh, his wife, who it was a, a previous wife of his, um, we were, she was just, you know, she always hung out. She was such a sweetheart and we were just drumming, doing our thing. And she goes, and, and, and our buddy's just drumming away. And she says to me, Hey, do you want to see us? You want to see something scary? And I'm all, no, like I, <laughs> and he, he stops drumming. He goes, Oh my God, dude. Yes, you do. And I was like, what? And I'm like, and he's, she's like, you have to see this. This is going to blow your mind. I'm like, what is happening? So she brings out, um, she took a picture of the picture is what this is. So. The story is this, okay? Her friend uh, is the one that told, so that, now it's her friend told her this and now she's telling me this, but okay. her friend says, you're never going to believe this. Her friend was at a birthday party uh, of, of, of like, you know, a bunch of family. She's mm -hmm. at this birthday party and they did their thing. They had their cake. It was a birthday party for uh, the, like her nephew or something. The kid had turned like nine or 10 or something. And they are having this party and they're having a good time. Cake, maybe a pinata. I don't know. It's a birthday party. Who cares? They had a good old time. Pictures being taken left and right. And this is back in the old days. Not not a camera. This uh, Not a digital, not a, a phone. A camera with film, right? right. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Pictures all over the place. People had a good old time. She gets the pictures developed. And then she's showing her boyfriend. And she's like, yeah, this is, you know, they're just kind of, you know, she's just kind of going. He's just looking over and enjoying it. And then, you know, she gets the one picture. And then she goes to the next one. He goes, who's that? And she's like, who's what? He's like, who was on that previous one? Who Who's that standing behind them? And she goes back and she just gets real quiet and she's just staring and staring. And I saw this picture. I'll tell you about it in a second. And uh, he's like, who is that? And she just is quiet for like 20 seconds. And she goes, that's my grandma. And he's like, like your grandma who passed. She's like, yes, my grandma who passed. Oh my gosh. That's my grandma. And I'm like, so I look at this picture and I'm like, no, absolutely not. Because what he thought, he thought it was somebody looking in through the window. Right. So because it, because the kid was, so, so here's the, the, the picture is this, this kid who was like nine or 10 is opening up some presents and he's, and he's sitting on a couch and behind the couch is a wall and that wall has a window. It looked like it was somebody outside looking in. That's why the boyfriend's like, why is somebody watching like, this, enjoying this party from window. outside? Yeah. Yeah. But she's like, that's my grandma. And so I, I see this picture and here's the deal. It wasn't like a hue of a person. It was a photo of, like it was clear oh as day gosh. and I'm all, no. No. And she's like, yes, dude. Like, this is, this is now my buddy's wife telling me she's like, yes. And I'm like, no, I'm like, no, first of all, first of all, no, because this is way too clear. That's, I mean, this is way too clear. It, that's a reflection of somebody bouncing off the window. She's like, everything you're about to do, this is what the girl did. Nobody in her family looks like her grandma. That's oh her grandma. Gosh. That's her grandma's clothes. That's what that, that, this is. This is her grandma. And I was like, dude, what is going on right now? No, there was another negative that was stuck in the right. camera. Like I'm doing that's this. What I was, that's where my brain went. Yeah. Like, I, oh, there's some other burned image. Yes. I was like, in was stuck, the camera. yeah, she's like, look at her eyes. I look and, the, and her eyes are looking exactly at the kid opening the present. Oh like she's gosh. enjoying watching this happen. I, whew, wow. I'm telling you, I wish I had that picture now because you would look at it and be like, what is going on? Like, could it be what we just talked about in regards to burning? I mean, sure, maybe, but I mean, I, I, I took photography for a while. I'm very familiar with actual yeah. physical film. That's not something that happens on accident. There's no burn in on your lens. That's not a thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? I just, I needed it to be a thing because this is way too scary yeah. and way too real. Oh my gosh. Ugh. That's crazy. I know. That's crazy. You're welcome, everybody. I know. Yes. No one's sleeping tonight. Yeah, sleep well. <laughs> Nighty night. That's what we'll do. Make sure you listen to this in bed at night. Oh, by yourself. no. <laughs> Dude, there's gonna be so many people mad that we did this one. I'm so sorry. I'm so. I thought it was just gonna be fun little ghost stories. Oh. That's that's too much. I'm rubbing my arms. That's I can't too push. much. I know. I gotta push all the bubbles down. I gotta push all the bubbles. You remember? You used to say it was painful. It, you, well, when you get goosebumps, well, you used to be like, "It's painful. Is it not painful for you?" I'm like, "No, goosebumps aren't painful." Well, it's not like it's a ton of pain, but when they get like, "Okay, you ready?" 
when I watch the play Hamilton, which I love, it still happens to me. I can't, there's, when I watch it or I listen to the soundtrack, there's certain moments in it that my goosebumps feel like they're going to rip my skin apart. I don't, can I just enjoy something and not have to go through this <laughs> stupidness? Wow, man. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Now, you told me about your dream. Well, or, or not your dream. You told me about when the experience. Up, yeah, yeah, when you woke in up. In bed. Yeah. And it, it, and, and it uh, made me remember a story that uh, another really good buddy of mine, another dude I've known longer than you, and uh, really, really great dude. And I hate the fact you have all these other friends. I, <laughs> I, like, do. I just, I, I'm loyal, man. I just found you in that. You're my it. number one, no. but I, <laughs> I just have lots. Uh, but this guy, he was telling me, and he's like, that's the thing is that I don't think you've ever met him. Um, he's a really, really wonderful dude. Like, like just very gentle hearted type thing. And he had this experience in this house that when he was younger, where there was always something watching him when he was younger, it just drove him nuts. It drove, he hated it, dude, because he was a little, it, it was, he would just, it was always the same old thing where he would wake up in the middle of the night and then he would over by the door, there'd be a silhouette of a dark figure um, in the door watching him, right? You, he couldn't make out eyes or mouth or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it would be this figure in the door and it was always sort of a mix of I'm kind of dreaming but kind of awake like yeah. that mid-stage yeah you thing. almost feel like is there just some something in my eye you yeah yeah because I mean? you when you wake up you get that goop in your eye sometimes yeah you know? and you wonder if like oh maybe it's just that and it's causing some sort but for it to be in like a shape right right <laughs> and so and sometimes it would be that he was dreaming and he would wake up and it wouldn't be there and other times he would kind of wake up as it was disappearing or whatever. Like it just was this thing that he always had this fear, but the, what was crazy. And here, here I am logicing my way out of it again, is that he always knew he was about to see it before he saw it, which tells me that his brain was making it happen. Oh, right. Yeah. Which could be, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is he would, he would, what he thought is he would wake up and he would have his eyes closed and he'd be like, it's there. I know it's there. And then he would open his eyes and there it is just looking at him from across the room. Right. And uh, this went on for a long time. He lost a lot of sleep um, over this as a kid for a long time. And then uh, there was a one night where the same thing happened. And he wakes up. His eyes are closed. He's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want this thing to be here. And he opens his eyes and he looks at the doorway and it's not there. And he feels a temporary relief, but he knows it's there. It's just not there. And he tilts his head back and looks up and it's standing behind his bed, looking straight down at him. Oh. Yes, dude. Look at my arm, bro. Yeah. You got right? good. <laughs> yeah. So he looks up and it's looking down at him. And I, and this is where the story falls apart for me. I'm, I don't remember. Like, I think he like freaked out and woke up and then it was gone or whatever. Um, but whatever. And it could have been his brain filling it in. But mm -hmm. what I do know is that when they moved, never happened again. Wow. Never happened again. It's That's... like, it, like these ghosts, they set up shop. They like their, their house. Yeah. I'm just gonna if I get I'm just gonna ask a ghost. Do you do you want me to leave or not? I'd be like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. No, you got you. You can't say that, dude. <laughs> said it. He said, "Come all on, three. man. Where's Michael Keaton? Uh, I, I need him. Michael Keaton would just fly <laughs> through the ceiling right now. Michael dude. Keaton will solve everything. It's all good. God. Oh no, I don't. I don't. Why did I'm so sorry? <laughs> this was your idea, <laughs> by the way. This... I, actually, it was my wife's idea. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. <laughs> she, she's like, you guys need some more fun topics. Talk about ghost stories. Yeah. And we start talking about it. I'm like, oh, I'm so afraid to go to bed tonight. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, dude, I would, I feel because you, me, Tango, and Joker have such a huge following on the Phasmo front on our the game that we play mm -hmm. together. We should find a way to do a real ghost hunt one time. Oh like, my gosh. I, like, I don't know if I've got Dude, that'd be so awesome. I want like the puck that makes the noise and then you hear him like speak. Yes. And stuff yeah. Here, you know? Oh. And then like, oh, there's a little, okay. Phew. I thought there was an orb. It was just a little hair floating. Okay. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> when I, when I, when we're playing Phasmophobia, it's a video game, dude. Yeah, dude and I that. do the spirit yeah. box and I'm like, and I go by myself. It's a video game. I'm like, guys, I got to go in this fake room by myself yeah. you guys leave and i'm scared and i and i yep. and i'm like where are you and it and i hear it come through my right ear it's all next to you and it's like video game and i go run that's that's raw be going ah and running out <laughs> can you imagine that in real life dude oh dude i i i wanted to try phasma on the vr oh yeah VR set and yeah so i i did i plugged it in and put the vr set on and i I walked into a house and and I we I've never played Phasmo alone it's like we're always together. Petrifying. And yeah, I was like, mm -mm. 
Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I'm like, at least not alone. I'll do it. I'll do it if there's other people with me, but not yeah. alone. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Like the game itself freaked me out. Yeah. It was so good. I, oh man, I'm looking forward to playing that game. So yeah, we, we got have so much fun playing that. Oh, game. Oh, I can't. I just. I love that game so much. But dude, I do. I want to do a real life one, man. Oh, I'm like, never gonna. Like, there's so many places around us that have been like deemed as, as haunted or whatever. Oh, we got a lot here. And uh, yeah, there's a lot. Our and... high school is one of them. Yeah. Actually, there's a is... story, dude. <laughs> I that's that's I repressed it. <laughs> you can tell it. No, you, you tell. No, you tell. I, don't I told all. The, it. I don't, really? I don't remember. So we. I know. I know something happened, but my brain doesn't have all the details. And I probably oh, repressed it. Oh, mine harder, does. Maybe. Yeah. Look at my eyes. Here's what happened. So you, me, and uh, so we were teaching oh, there. Oh, this was the auditorium. What? Yes. Oh gosh. Okay, go. No, you know, remember. No, now. I don't you, remember enough. Okay, so here's the deal, thing. dude. Do your thing. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna say it, and I know that people are gonna end up googling this, and we're just gonna have to be at peace with that. But yeah, this, true. this is the 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 auditorium of our high school is recognized as like top fifty or whatever haunted places in Arizona, and I didn't really know this. We just started talking about it like that night or whatever. And when I did research later, it's very real. And it turns out, and this is not to make any sort of light of this, but before our time there. There had been a very tragic event in the auditorium. Somebody, a, a student, had had killed themselves. It's very, very tragic, and and then it had been haunted ever since or whatever. I didn't know any of that. This was it was way years before I went to the school. Mm-hmm. Well, you, me, and and Edgar were all teachers there. We were well instructors. We were doing the drumline stuff. We yep. talked. That's that's the WGI show. And it was always it was always spooky at night. It was already spooky at night. Yeah, just, it's just weird being in a, such a big space, kind of like. By yourself. Yes. And yes. Nice. And so I decided, now this is the fun part of the story. I'm going to do the fun part. I'm going to do the prank and then I'm going to tell the real story. Okay. So we started talking that night because every time that we had to shut down, there was nobody on campus. So you, me, and Edgar had to close all the doors, lock all the yeah. doors, make sure the lights are off, all that, and then we can leave, right? And it was always just kind of spooky for whatever reason. Well, when we learned of the fact that this was a haunted place and then we were able to see the, the story behind it. Now it's like, dude, this is even doubly spooky. Yeah. So I decided, now Edgar was getting, you know, he was kind of spooked. He had this volleyball. I'm telling the whole story. He had this <laughs> volleyball that he was playing with all night long. And we had to go back and forth between the band room and the um, arts and crafts room because we were building sets or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And um, he had this volleyball all night. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess with him. I'm going to mess. So him and I are throwing the ball back and forth. You know, we're just having fun. He looks away and I grab a pencil and I just write get out on the ball. And I hide the pencil. I throw it back. We're going back and forth, back and forth. And then he's looking at the ball and he sees get out on it. And he's all, did you? Did you write this on here? And I'm like, did I write what on there? And now I'm the, here comes the acting chops. Yeah. I'm like, did I write what? He's all, did you write get out on this? And I'm like, whatever, dude, you wrote that. He's like, I didn't write this, dude. I'm like, it's your ball. He's like, it's not my ball. I, I found it in the room. I'm like, well, it was probably already on there. And he's like, yeah, yeah it was probably already. And it's, it's like faded, you know, pencil markings. He's like, yeah, it's. Yeah, I was probably already on. Yeah, I was already on there. You know what I mean? So now he's just like, yeah, yeah. So I replaced it. I'm like, okay, that's step A. I know what I'm doing next, dude. So I get a black marker or a red one, black or red, something. And I put it in my pocket and I'm like, he is holding onto this ball. I'm going to find a way to outline get out in this new marker when he thinks he had possession of the ball the whole time, dude. And uh, we're in the arts and crafts room now and he's playing with it and he's making it very difficult to pull this off. He puts down the ball for maybe five to six seconds while he's looking the other direction. I scoop it up, I trace it, and I put it back and I, and I tuck it. I accomplished this in like five seconds, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, the seed has been planted. He's playing with the ball for like another 20 minutes, doesn't notice it. We're walking back. And now as he's just dribbling the ball as we're walking down that long corridor, you have no idea I've done any of this. Mm-hmm. We're walking, it goes you on the left, he's in the center, I'm on the right, and I know he's about to see this. And my brain's like, okay, is when Edgar realizes it, he's going to have a real reaction. You have to keep it together. You have to keep it together. And all of a sudden I hear he's bouncing, bouncing, the bouncing stops. And I hear his sneakers go er, on the ground and I'm all and I like, oh. like a teeny tiny, like barely, barely audible laugh. And I'm so mad at myself. Like, keep it together. And then we, you and I just keep walking. I finally put, ran it back in. You didn't even realize he stopped. And then you realize that you're like, what's going on? Which was great because that's real reaction because you had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? And he's looking down at the ball and the, he's as white as a ghost. And yep. he's all, and he slowly looks up at us. He's all, dude, dude. And that's all I could say, dude. I'm like, what is going on, Edgar? And he's all, dude. And he turns the ball around and he says, get out and the marker. And now I'm like, the best reaction I can give 
is to not buy this for one second. And I say that I'm like, I'm not buying it for a second, Edgar. And I was like, I, and he, and I'm, and he's like, I didn't do this. I'm like, you've had the ball the whole time. He's like, I know. I didn't do this. And I'm like, whatever, dude. And you're all, and now you a very logical person. You're all, no, Skiz did this. And, I, and I'm like, <laughs> I didn't do anything. And I got to, I got to get you to doubt it for just a second. You're all, no, I'm not buying it. And, and, and then Edgar's like impulse. I, 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 I I've had the ball the whole time. The whole time it's been in my possession. I, I've had it the whole time and he's freaking out, dude. And I look at him and I'm like, dude, I know you're messing with us. And all of a sudden I laugh for a fraction of a second. And I just, I just, I, I blew it. You were you losing. Yeah. I remember giving you crap because I'm like, dude, you're, you're, you're losing your skills. You yes. To I, yes. Together. <laughs> I got so much static <laughs> from you. You're like, you used to be so much better at this. But I was like, I, and he was so mad and laughing. He's like, dude, how did you do this? I've had the ball the whole time. I'm like, you put it down for a few seconds. He's like, oh, so now it's fresh on our minds. Okay. We're locking up for the night, dude. We're walking away. All three of us are together. And we are, we are not liking that we're as close to the auditorium as we are. There's nobody in the building. It's just the three of us. And we hear the largest, loudest door slam we've ever heard. And those doors are giant, thick, heavy, heavy. metal. They're they heavy. don't they're, move. They're, not, they're actually not easy to open and they, close. They're not. And yeah. to the point to where there wasn't like there was a vacuum created by the AC that created this movement. Oh. It was a giant. I mean, it was huge. And now none of us are laughing. We all looked at each other and it, the fear that came over us was real. Mm -hmm. And we just sprinted. And I felt like it was sort of a message to me, like, don't mess around with this. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we just ran, dude. We just ran the whole way. We locked up and we left. And I remember we all dreaded going back to practice the next week, right? Because yeah. that, that particular practice, that late night one was once a week. And I was like, dude, I, we have, oh my God, I don't, I'm not coming back next week. And we did and we faced it, but oh it's, man. It's so crazy, dude, because... When you're like, yeah, you were there. You could tell the story. And I'm like, no, I couldn't. I can't tell this story. I, I literally couldn't piece like all that together. And then now that you just retold it, now I, now I remember every single moment <laughs> like I recorded it in my brain. Yeah. You have that. You have a gift as a storyteller, by the way. Uh, thanks, Ben. You're a leader and a storyteller. What can you do? <laughs> God, I didn't know. I didn't know this podcast was going to be me blowing your head up I'm every I'm feeling week. great. <laughs> oh man all right well now Sleep that we've well. given everyone the heebie jeebies yeah um halloween's coming enjoy it is yeah <laughs> halloween's around the corner so uh enjoy it and and sleep well tonight i <laughs> know sorry no. about that just yeah. uh, have a have a good night's rest i don't know i feel fine about it <laughs> <laughs> i don't feel bad at all I'm, that was fun i mean I guess if you want to share some stories in the comments, go for it. Yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah do that, some stories in the would, comments. That'd be fun. I'd like to read those. Um, yeah. And then we will, we probably might want to put a tiny disclaimer, like telling scary stories or something. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was thinking, oh, we'll just title this podcast, you know, ghost stories, but I think we better say warning. <laughs> so, which means for the audio version, I'm probably going to put a blurb at the beginning of it. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. That's a good idea. I won't even do it in a spooky way. Yeah, you will. I know, maybe. Yeah, no, will. I won't. I will figure it out. I'll figure it out. All right. I'll anyway, see. please forgive us, and we'll uh, we'll catch you guys next yeah. time. All right. See ya. <laughs>